Now we're ready for the part two. So the first part, we did the count. So we've got our count. So you know that these are 11 and these are nine. 9, 9, 9, 11, 11, 11. So <clears throat> what you're gonna do, so you got your string, is see how this one is the last one for this row? Well, that's where we're gonna start. So you're gonna go in the hole above it. You're gonna pull it through and you're gonna hold it. And then you're gonna go in this hole once you get it lined up. And we're gonna go in the next one. The more advanced plastic canvas crafters, I'm sure you've already finished this entire part of the side, but for those who are beginners, we're gonna take it one step at a time. So now we're on step two of the process. All right. You can kind of eyeball it, but I would still recommend counting. You know, you can kind of eyeball about where you need to be height-wise and then just count it. Okay. So, as you can see, we've made a mistake. So how do you fix the mistake? So what you do is you can A, either undo the needle and the thread and then just pull it or you can unstitch it. So you need to figure out what the last hole was that you came in, pull it back a little tight and come back through that same hole and then pull it. Then pull a little bit tight, go in this hole and pull. And now you can see where I went too far. So now we're going to come back through the same hole. And voila, it's done. So that's going to happen from time to time. That's okay. That's how you fix it. Alright. So you can kind of run it across there. See if you're even, or we can count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So even though this row was already completed, it's still row 1. And then now we're at 11. So we're going to skip. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 3. And we're going to go up the rest of the way. You can do it like this. Make it go a little bit faster. Or you can do it the single way. Whichever way you prefer. Doing it like this though, after a while it kind of frays the string, the yarn. So it's up to you how you wanna pursue it. And you're just going to keep going all the way to the top. Then once you get to a part where you think you're almost there, you'll just stop and recount it. For those of you who are more advanced, you'll just Stop the video now, right here at this point. Finish out your sides and then come back. Oh. <clears throat> okay. So now you've realized you made another mistake. So you're gonna go back out this way and pull it. I'm trying to make some random mistakes that people would make so that I can show you how to um, correct it. So let's count and see if I need to take another one out. 
So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we have exact. So now we're going to go up 3. 1, 2, 3. Remember when you're counting the first row of your last stitch, skip a whole row, and then you'll start on row 3 will be where your first stitch goes. So first and third is where your stitches will um, go. And then you'll keep going. Now, even though this looks like a regular stitch, if you notice the back, it's flat. It's flush. See that? That's because when you are going in, it's making a minus sign because you're in the same row as the row that you have just stitched. So that is one kind of stitch. So if you want the back to look clean and flat and flush, especially if you're doing coasters, you always want to do the stitch that goes in the same hole as the same row. And it gives you that flat look and keeps it kind of even. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm going to show you, let me get through this part and I'll show you the same stitch, but how the back side is going to be a little bit more fluffier. Count it and make sure that we are at 11. So let's go ahead and give this one a count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so see how it's flush? All of it's kind of flush. It's like straight lines. But then you notice here it's kind of a zigzag. Can you see the zigzag compared to the flush? Um, like this side. See how that, this side's flush, and this side kind of goes at like a slant, just like the front. So the front and back almost look identical. Well, that's the same stitch, but it has two different outcomes on the back side. So in order for it to have the flat, you always want to go in the way that we did on here. Now let's say if you want it to be fluffy, then what you got to do... Let me do this part. Okay. So let's say you want it to be fluffy. You want the fluffy part. You don't want it to be flat and flush. And it doesn't matter the back, so don't worry about it. But see how you have the straight lines, how it's perfectly straight lines? That's the same stitch. See here, same stitch, but it's flat. All right, so now we're going to go across. And I'm going to show you what it looks like when you do it the fat way. So you're going to start off like you normally do. You're going to pull it through. Okay. All right. Now. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Now to make it so that it's not flat, so it has the same design, we're going to go at an angle. So it's the exact same stitch you've been doing this whole time, except for instead of going across this way and making the stitch this way, you're going to go above it. You're going to go above the same stitch. You're going to go above it. I'll show you the back side here in just a second. So instead of going across the side like we were the original stitching, we're now going at an angle. Okay. So it's the exact same stitch. Same stitch. But now look at the back. Notice the difference? These are at an angle and these are slanted. Same stitch, different outcome. So when you start, if you are very OCD or if you just prefer things to be clean, that's how you would know which stitch you're doing. The stitch that we're doing here is one, two, three. 
need to go four. Okay, so we're gonna go in four. So we're gonna go in the fourth hole here, so one, two. And then that one should count out to three. So one, two, three. Yep, and then there's, there's it. So see how instead of going here and stitching, we're gonna go above the stitch. That's gonna give it the fat look on the other side. Same stitch, the back, it has a different outcome. It doesn't matter if you mix and match it. Sometimes you don't even realize you've done it until you're done. Me, I don't worry about the back side as long as the front looks good and the back is kind of clean. And you're just gonna keep going until you finish. That's eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so we're gonna do nine. So we're gonna do nine. And we're gonna skip our three. So you're gonna skip the three, remember? One, two, three, but we gotta go up four because we're gonna do one more. And then we're gonna go one, two, three, and go in the third one. You can turn your plastic canvas different ways to adjust to the way that you're holding it, whichever is more comfortable for you. If you notice, I'm constantly flipping it so that you can get different views of different angles. Oops, I just hit my light there. That's another thing, it's hard to make videos with all these lights everywhere. I don't have very good lighting, so I apologize for that. Just make do with what we got. All right, so now we're at the end of our row here, so we're gonna count it, because if not, we don't wanna get all the way through and then find out we've miscounted our stitches. So we're gonna make sure that we have nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine and nine, so it's starting to come together as you can see. And you can do rows this way or this way, whichever is more comfortable for you. But because we're about to start on this next row, I'm just gonna go here. And as you can see, you went too far up. We're not in the same row as that one. I don't know if you can see that stitch. See that one's not lining up with that one. So that means it's not stitched right. So we're gonna undo that one. And we're going to take this one out, undo that stitch, okay? Easy fix. So here's the row that we were in, not supposed to be in that one. So you're going to count three down, one, two, three, and then start. So still count, always count. And now that I've gotten this second row here, you can kind of see why you have the space of three. Because with the space of three on here, that's where we're gonna fill it in. So see, one, two, three, it's gonna be filled in. Okay, so you gotta go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one, two, three, four. So we're gonna go over to the fourth one. One, two, three, go into the third one. And now you can see how it's kind of starting to come together. You're gonna continue this process all the way until you've completed it. So I'm gonna stop right here. This is the end of part two. And once you have completed it, you will know how it looks. Now if you wanna see what the other square looks like, see we're at one, two, three, you can even go down if you want. I prefer to do the long rows, but I'm just gonna show you real quick 
what it's gonna look like when you run it both ways. So you'll see how it's gonna look. So hopefully you can see this. So see how it looks now? You can kind of start to see one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's where your white's gonna go. So just keep going until you have completed the entire canvas rose. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe. If you're a beginner, I hope this helped you out. Just keep playing the video over and over again if you need to for each row, each step, whichever is easier for you. Thanks for watching.